Hi, I'm Nikita Ugla, and you're watching Permanent Rain Press. Hi, everyone. It's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press, and today I am so happy to be joined by Nikita Ugla. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Uh, it's been such a big, exciting week for you with the release of Young Royals. Take me through those emotions. How have you been feeling? Uh, it's been crazy. It's been so much emotions everywhere. Uh, I don't really think I have processed it yet. So <laughs> I'm just everywhere. It's so much love. Uh, all around. Uh, I haven't read anything negative yet so it's just all love and so much energy. Everyone is so happy and just wants to see more. Yeah. I know petitions have already started for season two. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about we'll talk more about the show in a bit. But I know last week you got to reunite with your cast members, uh, celebrate together. Was that the first time you'd been together as a group since you um, stopped filming last year, or uh, as a whole? Yes, uh, but we've been meeting each other a little bit in smaller groups because we all are friends, actually, so we hang out together sometimes. I wanted to start with your background in the arts. Do you remember that initial spark that got you passionate about performing? You know, I've always been into uh, standing on a stage and performing and just, just being in the spotlight since I was a little girl. Um, so when I was really, really, really young, I started at this um, theater school, kind of, where we did musicals. Um, and so I think it started when I was like five or six years old. Uh, and then when I was like 10, I started at this school. So yeah, it started really young. But I've always loved to be on a stage and be in the spotlight. <laughs> Are there any specific actors or films, or series that really inspired you growing up? I mean, Zendaya has always been one of my like biggest uh, like idols uh, in the filming industry. Um, but a specific series when I was young, I didn't have like these specific uh, series or films that I was like, oh my God, this is so inspiring. Um, but I more had people that inspired me. But Zendaya was one of them. Yeah. And she can do it all, right? She can sing. She really act, can. Dance. Yeah. She can do it all. She's such a power woman. And I love that. Yeah. Tell me about the support you've had with your career in the arts. You mentioned people. Are there people who have taught you at school or perhaps family members? Uh, I have had great teachers throughout the years uh, here in the school where I live. Uh, I went to this th uh, theater school that I said before. And then also when I started high school and at the, our gymnasium we have here in Sweden, uh, I had amazing teachers that taught me everything. I mean, I know everything from building a stage to uh, putting up lights to uh, different acting techniques and everything. So they have been great. And I'm sure with those lessons, it's cool to kind of take that and then go into a series set and see it all come together on a bigger scale. Yeah, that's amazing. I have only done like uh, musicals and theater before. So to stand in front of a, ca a camera and act as normal or natural as possible was um, a really big difference, but oh, so fun. So let's talk about that show, Young Royals. You star as Felice. She comes from a wealthy family, which has its own pressures and reputation. What did you most enjoy about this character? And then in contrast, what really challenged you about her? I really liked uh, that she was, she did a big, um, uh, she went through a lot during the series. She went from this uh, girl who had a facade up all the time and tried to like show the perfect picture to kind of lean towards like everything doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to fit into all these standards and the pressure from your parents 
don't you can say no it's okay to be yourself to be true to yourself I really like that uh, but since she was a high class girl she was had a lot of money uh, that was kind of difficult for me to relate to because I don't come from that world I I mean we're a standard family here uh, so that was difficult to not portray the money as too much or make it make fun of it just to portray it as normal as possible yeah I thought you did a tremendous job as you mentioned Thank the you. the class system it wasn't really brought up by Felice directly more so people you know reminding her that that she came from such a wealthy family we are going to talk about the events of season one so for those watching make sure you have caught up on episodes one to six then come back to this interview uh, you mentioned her growth I love seeing that in the season what did you think was the turning point like the scene for her where she finally decided you know I want to stand up for myself more and and to my parents and my mother. Uh, I think it started when she got the Lucia dress from her mother sent to her. Um, that's when it kind of all started growing in her because she knows what her mother wants all the time uh, and the, and so that's when she sent that dress that she knew she couldn't fit into, uh, something in her mind kind of started like, mm -mm, this ain't right. <laughs> so I think that's when it kind of started. And then at Lucia, when she tried it on and it really didn't fit, that's when she was like, okay, screw this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take another dress. She's just gonna have to deal with it. I'm gonna have to take it later. But right now I have to be true to myself. I can't do this. I can't not be just, because she wants me to wear her dress no yes got yeah. to stand up for herself and <laughs> I would love to see a more like productive conversation with her mom especially in season two with Felice's goals now aside from like that scene what was your favorite to to be a part of what scene was my yes. favorite Oh, there are a lot of scenes, but I think one of the most fun to record was one night when we all were kind of, we were so tired uh, and everyone was like laughing and we couldn't keep a straight face. Uh, so it's the scene where uh, August asks Felice about her, about Sarah's uh, ADHD and ADD and the pills she takes. Uh, and all of a sudden, Samuel and Nils, who plays Vincent and Nils, comes in and starts throwing candy at us, and we just we just lost it. Just started laughing and everything. They cut most of it, thank God, because we couldn't keep a straight face. But it was so fun to record. Yeah. Is there like a blooper reel out there that has these scenes in them? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I hope so. <laughs> Netflix released the footage. Um, I like what you mentioned because it's like that was a good scene. But on the flip side, you remember a lot of what happened behind the scenes and you're taking that with you. Uh, you shared many scenes opposite Frida as Sara. Did you two just become fast friends? Had you known each other prior to filming this project? No, we had no idea about each other. Uh, I moved from Skåne uh, right before the shooting and she moved from Brazil, no, Barcelona. She did Barcelona. Uh, she moved um, and directly started shooting. So we had kind of, we just met once before we started filming together, but we just clicked the first time. And then after that, it was meant to be. I mean, I love that girl more than anything in this world. I would do anything for her she's my oh she's in my heart yeah that's so sweet and you had so many great scenes um I know a lot of people are talking about the one in the stables where uh Sara gives Felice advice about Rousseau and she tells Sara that her Asperger's is her superpower and I know that Frida has Asperger's in real life so that must have been such a like important scene between the two of you did you talk about it ahead of time or did you kind of just let it play out naturally we actually talked about it before um but just because we talked about everything 
So we just sat down in the break room and talked about everything life. And then it came up and we started talking about the scene and everything. So yeah, I knew prior to filming that. I think it was good to build that understanding and then it just kind of blossomed, their friendship blossomed from there. Uh, if there is a season two, what would you like to see more of from Felice? Oh, I don't know. I think that's up to the writers. They are doing such an amazing job. I mean, we all love season one. So I'm going to put that in their hands. Uh, I trust them and Lisa so much. She's amazing. So I'm putting that in their hands. <laughs> Whatever they give you, I'm sure you would be happy to play on screen. Of course. <laughs> And you had your intimacy coordinator, Sarah, on set. What was it like working with her and how important do you think these positions are in productions nowadays? Working with Sarah was so much fun. She's such a relaxing person. So she really made the whole environment filming this scene such a comfortable place. Uh, and I think that's really important when you're doing such intimate scenes and we are really young people as well. So I think it's really important um, to take the time and have an intimate coordinator uh, on set on hand to kind of direct everyone to towards what's okay and what's not. And so I felt really comfortable and I think uh, it's, it was a really good experience for me because that's also one of my favorite scenes to film, I always say, because she made it fun. It was fun for everyone. It was relaxing, no stress. So I think, I think everyone should have an intimate coordinator for everyone's safety and happiness. And yeah. Did you and Malte have to do any sort of like trust exercises during like those workshops? Yeah, we did. Uh, Sarah always starts with uh, a trust exercise and going through uh, the whole body and clearing spaces. Uh, so uh, we always, uh, before filming those scenes, we always uh, took some time to be together before and just went through our bodies and like, okay, you're, I'm okay with you touching me there and you're okay with me touching you there. So yeah, we did mentally and physically prepared and like you mentioned so important now I know Felice initially had eyes for Willem due to his royal status but for Nikita what is it like watching Edwin and Omar together did you instantly see that chemistry between the two of them oh my god I love them two together they are so cute they are it's amazing uh, for me to watch them it's so obvious I mean they are their chemistry is amazing i mean what can you say we all love them we all do it's just the way it is i'm yeah. sure if you like get together and watch the show you're probably just like squealing every time that they are on the screen <laughs> together yeah <laughs> it was like when when i saw the movie scene where they first touch his hands on the on the leg I was like oh my god this is the scene this is the scene this is the scene like oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's so, funny because yeah. when you're <laughs> filming it you don't you know you're not picking up on all those details because you're just there watching the movie yeah. um you're sitting next to to Frida but then watching it back on screen you see how like pivotal and tense that moment was yeah yeah really <laughs> You are a singer, so I like that you did get to combine these two passions with Felice being part of Hilerska's choir. Which was your favorite performance? Oh, um, I think it was, uh, oh, I don't know. I think it was, it takes a fool to remain sane. That's such a good song. And well, Omar does, you know. He sings so good. Uh, it's amazing. It's, it's just remarkable. I, I don't even have words for it. Yeah.
the, that was the opening song um, kind of for that choir, which I thought was, that was also my favorite performance. Uh, the harmonies just like brought a new yeah. level to the song. And you mentioned Omar, he, he just released a cover single and I know you it shared did. it on your stories with your, is it like your signature yoga that you kind of do the, the <laughs> headstand? Uh, headstand. Um, have you been listening to that song a lot? Yes, I have. I'm playing it all the time at parties, uh, at home, just when I'm relaxing, when I'm training. Uh, I'm listening to it all the time. I love it. It's amazing. I think everyone should listen to it. <laughs> if you haven't already, go listen to Omar's single, uh, Takes a Fool to Remain Sane. Now, I do hope that Felice gets more solos in a season two. Is that something <laughs> that you would be open to doing? um I don't know actually if I would do it well if if they want me to do it I, of course I will do it but yeah uh, I think uh, Simon uh, does it so well so I don't know if Felice should go into his space <laughs> we'll see either way hope there's more music because the choir just always sounded so good and you also horseback ride so I feel like this character yeah. was perfect for you how long have you been riding for I actually haven't been riding for that many years now um I started when I was uh, younger and then I did horseback riding for a few years and then the theater kind of took over um but I've been riding on the side now and then when I get the chance. Uh, my godparents love that I love horses. So they always try to take me out riding uh, when I am with them. Um, but I haven't been riding for a few years now. So I love that I got to take horseback riding lessons uh, again for this series. Was it difficult to pretend like you didn't enjoy riding or being in the horse's company? <laughs> Yes, it was. Hugo the horse is so cute. And when I had to pull on him to kind of get him to like refuse me kind of, it was so hard. I felt so bad for him. He wasn't hurt, uh, but I felt so bad because I mean, all I wanted to do was cuddle with him and just ride and have fun and jump and everything. So yeah, it was hard <laughs> to pretend that I was scared of him. <laughs> Felice definitely looked annoyed. She looked frustrated yeah. at times. So you did a really good job. I know inside it was probably tearing you apart. Thank you. Yeah, it was. There's one scene where me and uh, Sarah, uh, Frida, was in the stable with him. And he's, he looks out with his head. And I just stand there and look so disgusted by him. And when I look back at it, I, I was like, oh, my God, no, I'm not disgusted by you. I love you. <laughs> Yeah. You have to uh, get the horse again for season two and make sure he knows how much you love him. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> take me behind the scenes. I know you mentioned earlier that scene where you couldn't stop laughing between takes, but what are a couple of your other favorite moments from working with this talented casting crew? Um. Oh, there are so many. Uh, one of my favorite scenes behind the scenes as well is when me and Malte did our intimacy scene with Sarah. And uh, uh, I think it was, uh, it's the first one where Felice comes in and uh, says, here I am and kisses him. Uh, and uh, Erika, who was directing that episode, uh, she was in the corner hiding so when we were filming, she was behind the desk, but you can't see her because she's so tiny. So she was, she was like crawled up in a, in a corner watching her monitor. And we all, after we, uh, took, we paused, she was like, okay, great guys, can we try this? And we just started laughing so hard. It was amazing. Yeah, so that's one of them. But, you know, everyone behind the scenes is such, uh, they are amazing people and love to, laugh and do sketches and stand up uh, and joke around so uh, every time in the break room there was always something going on someone put on a scene and did it so dramatic and it was amazing yeah
I think it was um we spoke with Omar he was saying like a lot of spontaneous like breaks into song and things like that going on yeah yeah there was one morning when it was like really dark outside and it was right before Lucia uh, but it just started like kind of become more colder and colder so we we turned off all the lights put up some uh, like warm candles and started singing Lucia songs uh, and just going full out Lucia Tog in the break room. It was really funny. <laughs> so you're saying what's on screen is like a tamer version of what it could have been. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, we were a little bit crazy behind the scenes. <laughs> really much energy. Did you get to take home anything from set? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe I did. <laughs> Uh, there is actually uh, an outfit that we wore to our weekend dinner with the blue um, like fluffy parts up here and then black uh, pants that outfit I loved I was so sad that I just got to wear it once uh, but then they gave it to me when we ended yeah that's a so, nice wrap right, present yeah it, it really was so now I have that one at home uh, yeah. Any Halerska uniform or, or like merchandise from that school? Merchandise we have, yeah. I think Netflix uh, has been probably sending you some stuff leading up. I've been seeing the unboxing videos <laughs> and things like that. Yeah, we got uh, a water bottle and a hoodie and a t-shirt and everything. So I'm all set. Yeah, You're all set to go back to school for, for another course. time. Run around. It's, yeah my going back to school kids of course <laughs> so the response um has been amazing as you mentioned not only in sweden but worldwide at places like brazil argentina italy um you've been seeing a lot of this love online what has it meant to you like have you had a chance to soak it in have you been looking at the fan art and fan edits i i try to look at everything uh, and at night before I go to sleep, I try to like go in the comments and answer the DMs as much as I can. Uh, but I everything that people tag me, I see uh, and I try to like as much as possible. But it's amazing how many people got affected by it. I don't think before it released, I didn't know it was going to be so big. I mean, I knew it was for Netflix and I knew it was going to be big, but I didn't know how much it would affect me. And affect other people um, so it's really nice to see and to connect with people and see how they feel about it and um, hear their version and what it means to them it's really amazing I'm sure it's also like a little bit of relief right because you made the show last year and you're kind of you're just not sure how it's going to go and then to have this this outpouring of love like does the cast have a group chat when it premiered did you kind of message one another and you were like I think a lot of people are loving our show yes we did we actually had a group chat and when it became number one in Sweden I think it was like the second day of the release we were the chat was blowing up it was so amazing everyone was like oh my god we're number one here oh my god we're five in that country and we're number seven in that country oh my god they did this fan art it's amazing oh my god so yeah I think we're all just really up in the clouds right now happy and so much love everywhere yeah I'm really happy for you all um your like creators directors writers everyone involved um now let's talk about food because you have an Instagram story highlight dedicated to food it made me so hungry looking at it <laughs> for people new to Stockholm or tourists in the future what are some of your favorite recommendations Oh, there are so many places. Um, I actually, the most of the food in that video, uh, that uh, story is uh, me cooking. So I actually don't go out eat that much. Uh, but one of my favorite places is, I actually don't know what it's, what the name is, but it's on Skeppsbro in Stockholm, uh, right next to, uh, um, um, like, when you go off the bridge down towards uh, Kung's uh, Trägården, it's on the right side. It's a burger place where they have milkshakes and everything. They have amazing burgers. 
uh, yeah. So, and also it's a sushi place uh, on Östermalm, right at Östermalm's uppgång. I don't know the name. I need to know the names of these places. If I see them, I will put it on my Instagram. So check in there. Um, but yeah, that sushi place right at the uppgång, the um, entrance of the Östermalms. Yeah train station i love that you don't know the names of the places you're just like <laughs> i only go for the food i know what i like at this certain place yeah i'm so focused on the food when i'm hungry i'm hungry i just i know what i want and i'm just going there to get my food what yeah. are some of your favorite things to cook at home oh to cook at home uh, i love to cook risotto i love to do sushi um tacos is uh, also a favorite uh, in my home, um, <clears throat> uh, there is also this vegetarian lasagna with a lot of cheese and uh, spinach and everything. It's amazing. Yeah, that's Have my you favorite. I think. Had the cast over for like a get together with you cooking yet? No, I haven't done that yet, but I think I need to do that soon. <laughs> but there was the one idea time... has been planted. Yeah, there was one time when I baked uh, buns, cinnamon buns, and brought to work all sorry, hot uh, buns. That was really appreciated. So, yeah, maybe have to have them over sometime. Fresh baking, nothing beats it, I'm sure, especially for those long days. Yeah. <laughs> And on that note, we have one more question, our signature question. If you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? Mm. Can I choose a specific Ben and Jerry? Because <laughs> it's the blondie brownie with a, a caramel core, because I feel like it's, a, it's the blonde brownie and the chocolate brownie. It's a perfect mix, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I think I would, but if I have to choose uh, the chocolate fudge brownie, but if I got to be a whole Ben & Jerry, the blondie brownie with the caramel core. That's perfect. And we've had Ben & Jerry's before um, answer wise. So I like the pick. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Really appreciate it. Of course, thank you. Make sure to watch Nikita on Young Royals. It is out now on Netflix and we will see you next time.